Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain is for Oz and in today's episode we are going to be catching up with Richard over at Saito. The Red Army have been demanding on Twitter for an update so I'm more than happy to deliver but before we do if this is the type of content that you like then don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes but better still why don't you come on over and join us over in the telegram channel plenty of crypto enthusiasts from novices to pro traders so there's a bit of something in there for everyone now let's jump on in and see exactly what richard has to say about right hello richard welcome back to the show and uh, a new start to the year and uh, here we are yeah, thanks. Great to be here. First uh, 2022, first yeah. year of the Tiger. So great to be kicking off with you. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. Well, right. So let's jump straight into it then. So I think, first of all, um, I'd like to say thank you to Saito in general uh, from a personal perspective. And why I say that is um, as a content creator, it's it's brought my awareness up. And also, as I'd mentioned before, now I get random <laughs> teats from <laughs> from the Saitosan army about asking for an update every month. So as you said before, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse in disguise at the same time. <laughs> but I appreciate it nonetheless. And so, you know, here we are to get that update. So let's jump straight in. So let's start with community first, because I think that makes sense because, you know, various members of the community are reaching out. Um, you know, let's talk about holder growth and the increasing activity. Mm. What are you seeing on your side? Um, I mean, it's across the board. What we're seeing is, you know, I think the same as a lot of people are seeing, that Twitter is full of red cards. Mm. Um, our messaging is getting really solidly amplified. Uh, internally in the project, we're seeing just a massive increase in people getting involved yeah. and wanting to help and push the project forward um, and a massive vibe around what we're doing. Um and I think also a lot of validation to sticking with, I think people have been following in Telegram and stuff have seen this, you know, sticking with basics and fundamentals, messaging and the way we're rolling out the project, et cetera, not uh, getting carried away with things or tied into kind of DeFi modes, mm. uh, you know, things that don't suit the, the project. And that's having a massive effect. Mostly you can see it, the, the, the people who be sort of go full sighters and people who take some time, find out what it's about, um, and then really get to know Saito. And, and those people make, you know, they tend to become, you know, staunch followers yeah. uh, and they bring other people in, but they also make that experience worthwhile for people um, and, and really, you know, tend to get involved as well. So, yeah, we've seen holder growth on all the chains and in all spaces, but we've also seen, yeah, just across the board. I mean, my Twitter's gone full red yeah <laughs> um and we're, we're hearing that around the place i mean the i think i mentioned before the call i uh, shared a tweet with your friend uh not a crypto friend a yeah. friend uh, from from you know beijing back in the day was in a shop in london and heard two guys talking about you know Saito being the one crypto to rule them all um and that's just massive i mean that that means we're really starting to get some grip as a, as yeah. a project and and couldn't be happier yeah, no random random coffee shop chats with uh, Saito being mentioned is always a is always a positive. In terms of yeah. and and I've noticed there's lots more content coming out now, right? In terms of your resources and videos. That's I mean that's a big thing that's blowing you away. Yeah. Is you know we reached out to to people with exposure and channels during the IDO. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of those people, particularly like this channel, have been fantastic and long term supporters and got it early on. Um, but a lot of what's happening with that that growing community that I'm talking about is people are doing content and I'll, I'll share some links to go in the show notes, but, um, you know, uh, we, we had a really fantastic, uh, Saito for dummies. I'm not sure it's really aimed at dummies, but <laughs> it's a good thorough investigation from someone else's perspective of mm. what Saito is and what it does and, and quality content that I think anyone really interested in crypto could get into. Uh, and then Super Saitos and ZeroX Luminous has a couple of sites. He's made SaitoHolders.com, which just has uh, holder numbers, um, but also a fantastic Saito FAQs site um, and lists of Saito materials and stuff. Um, and all we can say about that is it's so great to have and we're doubling down. We've got some community-led projects now, this is mm. kind of meta, uh, aimed at just improving, we kind of want to relaunch Discord and update the wiki and stuff. We're working on this as quickly as we can. You know, people are volunteering time. 
Um, and the idea is just to give community a better place to go and find out how to get involved and a better way to participate. You know, what we're seeing is more um, interest in helping out than we can actually properly direct at the moment. Mm. So we're doing what we can to to help out with that. The least we can do is, you know, give people a good reception and an easy path to finding out something engaging and interesting and useful they could be doing. I mean, talk, talking about community, there's also the Elrond community, right? That's sort of you know, part, part, partly involved here as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's super interesting and it's, it's hard to tell exactly when you start engaging with people, what, you know, what a community would be like. And I, and I'm still guessing is exactly what differentiates Elronders from other people in the space generally mm. and why they're so positive on the side of message and, you know, open-minded, uh, but also well-informed and thinking. Um, but that's been a really great community to start interacting with. And I think we have some great ways to work together that are, are coming along. Um, and that's been really surprising. But, yeah, there's some key guys in there, Wesley, um, you know, is one of them who really trying to help us, you know, not help us mm. up, just just to really interested in what we're doing, and they're they're interested in melding the communities a bit, and that's that's been super positive as well. So let's kind of talk a bit more about uh, the, the the actual team now. So in terms mm -hmm. of in terms of hiring, you know, it, it always seems to be a common theme every time we speak that the uh, you know the project is growing as always, capacity is growing. So how are we looking in the hiring front? Um, I mean, we've still got job ads out for mm -hmm. developers and we could always, feels like we could always have more. Um, the good hiring we've done in the product space has started helping us get our, our house in order on a lot of fronts. Um, you know, it just makes it easier, better to, to sort of experience be tasks, et cetera, inside the group. But it's also exposing how ambitious our mm. goals are. Um, and everything we're trying to achieve, you know, we're very aware of that, but just starting to make proper lists, you think, oh, that's a long list. So <laughs> we're reaching out um, generally. People will be seeing a lot of our comms. You know, we've just decided to set that as one of our, our obvious key goals mm. is build the team and build our capacity as a project as well. So one of the huge things we've noticed when hiring is people – in some ways, there's one of those interesting curves, you know, yeah. where, the, where the, the the spike is different to where you'd think it would be. Mm. Um, in some ways, people without crypto experience coming in on, say, core development are better placed than if you've been doing a lot of solidity because the more your mind is in Ethereum space, the harder it might be to shift to, yeah. to Saito. Mm -hmm. um, but people who have, you know, read up on Saito who understand what we're trying to achieve, et cetera, obviously they become useful at a, such a higher rate. You know, it's so much quicker to get them mm. on board and contributing. And that community has grown so much that we really want to reach out there first and look for who can we bring in from the community and who from the community might have a bit of time here and there that, that you know, they'd really enjoy and appreciate directing that towards something that we need. So we're both reaching out for help with hiring, but also just with, you know, work in general, uh, you know, we'd re we're really doing what we can to make sure that people can contribute uh, and that they have something, you know, rewarding to do when they do. Um, so, yeah, please hit up the slash jobs, side of our slash jobs, but also just watch our socials and, and get involved. I mean, in, in terms of getting involved, I, I see a lot of projects also have a very strong presence within uh, within Discord as well. And I, is, mm. is that one of the areas that we're sort of expanding a bit more on? <laughs> Some, so it's kind of funny because I'm just mildly, I don't know why. It's one of those things. It's like a Mac versus <laughs> Linux versus PC or an Android versus iOS thing. I don't like Discord. No, I never dear. have it. I think it's just because I look in the wrong place. Yeah. Right? Um, but looking at it with my kind of old school CTO hat on, like what's right for the project, uh, it's certainly really well suited for trying to build some yeah. community uh, communications with channels and dedicated mm. stuff. Uh, and I can see why it's taken off amongst general open source projects, not just in crypto. Mm. So we're, we're again, this community project to just get some coordinated spaces there. We'll, you know, we'll obviously keep our telegram chats, et cetera, yeah. but, um, we want to set up a, a kind of uh, nexus between Telegram and the wiki, which will be, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully sort of punching live uh, or opening up at least uh, next week at some point. Um, as soon as we kind of got the the bones in place so people can start working on it. Um, and we're, we're trying to bring those two together just to make a much richer community experience and to help the community coordinate itself. You know, I think the best example is we had two people do some copy editing on the white paper yeah. at the same time. 
and then share it with us. And it was it was really sad because it was great work, but it it's kind of clashed and we weren't yeah. ready for it. And it hasn't been properly used. So we'd like to make sure there's a way for those people to find each other, to set up a, a, a program and say, well, here's the community white paper or something and get it published as soon as possible. You know, mm. we'd love that. Um, so yeah, putting in as much work as we've got time to without slowing other things down too much, uh, you know, and, and concentrating on that at the moment. Well, the, the, the red card army is forever growing, Richard. <laughs> it, it is. Love you guys. Yeah, even if you do keep us, keep our foot to the fire, I do love you guys. So let's talk about, about talk tokenomics. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, one thing, one thing that I notice uh, amongst uh, not just your project, but many projects in general, um, you know, is, is vesting of tokens because people mm-hmm. do want to support a project. And one way of supporting is obviously being vested in the project as well. Mm-hmm. But then there's also that fear from from the wider mm-hmm. community. I think, oh, you know, how many more vestings are left? You know, are people yeah. going to dump on us? And <clears throat> To be honest, one thing that I've seen, and I don't really talk much about charting on the show, but you know, we've we've seen a nice steady increase in price. I can't necessarily say that we've seen spikes going up and down, but you know, we've we've had a, I think we've had about three vesting unlocks so far, mm. and I, and with other projects where I've seen vesting unlocks, you know, you see quite a big drop off actually straight away in terms mm. of price action. Whereas here, it's it's maintained, but we're not talking about price really, but we're kind of talking about vesting. So we only have one more left, right? Yeah, so there's one more left in in April, and I think that kind of you know will will shape things a lot. I yeah. mean, I think anyone who's following us has seen we're really cautious and conscious not to dump tokens into yep. the market. So we could have we we have enough connections. We've been around long enough to mm-hmm. have gone to uh, one or two of the major exchanges and yep. dumped half a million to a million dollars mm-hmm. worth total value, probably mostly in Saito, via their platforms basically gets thrown out to their users yeah. um, and gotten maybe some kind of short-term price action on that, on those big exchanges. Um, we've not done that kind of thing and we've done it very calculatedly because we think it doesn't represent the right long-term yeah. trajectory for the project and for people involved. Um, so we've been very careful. We don't, you'll notice we don't throw project tokens around much at all. Yeah. Um, we're very, very cautious with those. Most of the things we do are sponsored with some kind of vested uh, mm. token. So, you know, a supporter is helping us out with that. Um, and you can see things like the pancake swap uh, experiment we did where yeah. rather than rather than get a pan, you know, syrup pool going where we're just taking tokens and throwing them away, basically. Now, we're giving them to some people, but other people aren't getting them in that case. And we're devaluing the, the whole token base in the process. Uh, we went with the liquidity program, which we feel is like a, a way of getting rewarded for genuine value. Yeah. I mean, people are staking their tokens there. They're earning real real mm. fees, and they do need to work out whether they reinvest those into Saito. If the price is going up, they will, you know, they'll, their portions Actually, will change. Yeah. And, mm. And they'll need to just be happy about how they want to do that. But it's a real way to be part of and support the project. And a good way to think to remember about that is if the project does that, then all of those tokens are going pushing out into the market, right? Yeah. So they're, un, they're, they're diminishing the value of your yeah, tokens no, anyway. Exactly. If we just So by being cautious this way, I think, and really thinking things through, as we move past April, I think we'll be in a, in a really unbelievably strong position where we've had all yeah. the support for this first year of backers. We've got things like this happening because of the way we did the the IDO and the vestings, yeah. right? So we've, got, we've, we've used it to work with good people and that's formed the basis. And I think we've used that in no small part to start growing the Saito army to where it is such that that will carry us on on a, on a really good trajectory into the next year. Um, so we're really happy how that's come together. And you can see with things like the pancake swap, uh, liquidity is now 100% yeah. community, community driven. She's just, I couldn't be happier about that. That's so fantastic. We, I've got a, I won't explain the security around it. I've got a wallet <laughs> um, right on standby mm. to push liquidity back in should it ever fall. And we monitor that closely. So we never leave the community out mm. and lurch. But it's so fantastic to just have that monitor that every day, see it stable or going up. Uh, and that to me is just a really great way of, of seeing, you know, 
interacting with the community, working together on the project and, and finding something totally win-win. I th- it also, I, I like to feel that it enforces the belief in Saito as well, because as you say, it's fully community funded. It's not, there isn't anything mm-hmm. from the core Saito team being dropped into Pancake Swap as it, as it stands. So that's really right. a powerful message, I think. Right. And it's, uh, yeah, it's an answer to when staking, when this yeah. it's an expectation these days that people can earn something from mm. their tokens. And it's an opportunity for people to do that in a way that contributes to everybody's value and, and, the, and the project moving forward rather than something where we're pretending like there's something good happening because we're leaking tokens into a no. distribution. Exactly. Pool, right. So. right. So let's move on to tech. I, <laughs> I hear there is a new site inbound. Again, heavily community supported. We've got mm-hmm. some some mega citizens who've done a, a world of work trying to set out the kind of the website for the next phase of the project. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be tied heavily to the wiki. Um, so we'll be having you know the sort of information dense uh, usability uh, stuff moved to the, the wiki and new kind of splash web page to get people to understand you know what they're looking at and get them involved as quickly mm. as possible it's, it's it's coming together really nicely i actually have a call uh with some creative guys right after this also in london um yeah, yeah so really good uh vibe around that and um i think that's that's something that people have been waiting for and hopefully and it should be our end of month early next month uh, hopefully people will be like it'll just be another boost to the project and people be excited about it no exactly and uh you're in browser client that's that that's getting a bit of a ux update now yep so i mean what we've done is we've got you know a bit we've reworked some key pieces of consensus to the rust model and then we had to move to things like binary blocks etc there's a lot of I call it sewing that kind of development. Mm. You know, you know the shape of it. You just yeah. got to—it's painstaking work, making sure <laughs> there's a hundred things connected together. Um, and as a part of that, we'll we'll be kind of setting out some basics for the the next phase of of our in-house product offering, the mm-hmm. arcade and those sorts of things. Um, you know, they started off early on as a POC. They're now a central part of getting up the transaction volume. We need you know, to, to build a real economy mm. on chain and to demonstrate how that's going to work. Uh, and to really match that, we need to start getting that up to, you know, the polish and the the enjoyability, playability of, of the games, et cetera. So we'll be pushing something out next week and we'll be asking community to come and give us some feedback on that, et cetera. And, uh, you know, looking forward to that. So that's, that's sort of next week depends, again, Chinese New Year and some other things, yeah. are, you know, sort of a bit slow this week. So hoping next week. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's really, uh, you know, kind of tied into the continued pro- progress on the rust side, you know, we're tying that together and we're starting to look at where that needs to be, mm. uh, moving forward as well. So that, that's, that's positive as well. Fantastic. And I suppose where did dot, Art, uh, dot arcade go? Um, so that's one of the cool, cool things <laughs> that, uh, we'll have this weird gap in the middle. So yeah. the new, the new site won't. Uh, won't have the dot arcade in its original format. Okay. Um, and that's because we're looking at a, a basically a generic alternative. So mm-hmm. the dot arcade, you know, was polka dot ecosystem specific and yep. it demonstrated how to do that. Um, we're working with a partner on something we can swap in, which will enable us to, you know, include a variety, you know, everything from mm-hmm. BCH to, you know, hopefully Elrond and, and other things. Uh, easily into applications. It will require some work uh, once we've got the basic piece in, but it'll be much, much simpler and much more generic for developers. Um, And that's going to be a big part of our kind of play the first half of this year is giving people the ability to develop apps that have this broader crypto coverage than, than say, specifically Polkadot or Saito itself. Fantastic. Well, Richard, thank you, as always, for the update. It's much appreciated. Hopefully my Twitter will... Uh, have a bit of work for the time <laughs> being. Um, like, and I've, <laughs> I, I, I've, unfortunately, I don't issue, I can't issue, like, re- I can issue a request. Please, no, no, please be okay. nice it's to, okay. no, to decentralise chain. I, I was going to say uh, same time next month, but now it looks like our updates mm. are dictated by the uh, <clears throat> red card army now. So uh, I will say next time, we'll next just, month, but let's see, it might be sooner depending on what the boss is. <laughs> if we're doing this every three days, we might have to think of something. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Richard, have a good one and I will see you on the next one. Cool. Thank see you. you later. Man. Cool.